Every so often on open forums on the internet, I'll see someone ask the question, what kind of tripod should I get for my spotting scope? Or they'll present the scenario, I'm getting a spotting scope, but what kind of tripod should I get? I see a bunch of answers and nearly all the time I feel that people are being ill-informed or misinformed about what they should be getting. Because I feel that people should be getting, most of the time for their spotting scope, what's called a scope stand. And to describe what a scope stand is, I have one right here. With my Koa 821M with the 27X long eye relief eyepiece. This is my spotting scope I had for many years, well over 15 years. I used it for high power service rifle competitions to spot my targets at matches. So it's sitting on what is called a scope stand made by Raven. Raven no, is no longer in existence. Uh, I think the company might still exist, but they the guy, the original owner, he retired and no longer makes these scope stands. Unfortunately, I feel they're good scope stands. So what's a scope stand compared to a tripod? To also elaborate on that, I have this really rest stuff. This is a TVC 22i. This is their inverted tripod, but it's basically a tripod with a BH55 ball head on top. So your traditional tripod, three legs at an apex up top where the, where the ball head sits, and you have these legs which extend down. And let me fully extend this one. This one's pretty tall. I'm very short, but this one is pretty tall. Compare this to a scope stand. And let me take the spotting scope off it real quick so we can show it without the optic in the way. You notice here that this scope stand is just a single one piece, one inch diameter bar with a apex at the bottom. The apex being where all the legs meet. On a traditional tripod, the apex is at the top near the ball head. Here on a scope stand, the apex is at the bottom, at the base of where your, your basically the essentially the, the core of your stand is going to be, which is this diameter bar or the shaft. And it does fold up. I have three legs, so you could argue, hey, that's a tripod, the, you know, for all you know, for all semantics sake. But it folds up, and I can deploy the legs as you can see here. Although this one needs to be tightened up, and I have this small footprint with a head up top here. But let's ignore the head for a second here and just more focus on the footprint. So the scope stand, tripod. It's very clear that you can see here that a scope stand is a very smaller footprint than this tripod. This tripod, if I'm looking at it right now, it's, near, it's well over four feet diameter as far as the base is concerned. When you put the entire, all three legs out, fully extended, the base, it occupies a four foot diameter area. Compared to this scope stand, it only occupies about one and a half feet. Significant. Now, why is that important? Most people who, who get spotting scopes are usually spotting for themselves. I've seen that. Like, they're out of spotting. They want to spot for themselves. They want to go to the range, see their paper target, maybe see the steel that they're shooting at, see where they're hitting on steel. That's great. And my spotting scope, I usually, I, when I use my spotting scope in high power competitions, it was mainly for myself. So, what does that mean? If you look at this, this is going to be in the way. Like it's very cumbersome. You can't utilize this. Let me, and we'll, to be fair, let's deploy it into a height that I normally would run it out for myself. I mean, and you can see it's still going to have a wide, wide footprint, you know, wide footprint area. If I try to use this in prone, it's not going to work, right? And let me show you why. In, in prone positions, with a scope stand, what you can do is set this down next to your position, drop the head on the scope stand to the ground, very close to it. And most spotting scopes have a locking call that rotates. But let's say I was shooting F class or some fixed position match, right? Where F class, you're just sitting prone on the firing line. High power, you're on a sling, but I don't, I don't wanna shoot with a sling right now, but Let's just say I'm, I'm in F class. I've set down my position, my target's over there. This is where I'm gonna shoot. What I can do is move my spotting scopes or my scope stand to get my spotting scope in position. I can angle my, my scope accordingly. Let me get this thing locked into place here. So it's relatively fair. Okay, comparison. And then I have my spotting scope here. I can position, can adjust. Now I can take my shots. Target runs down, the guy's scoring it, and then I can I can easily just move my head over to the left. And that's kind of low. I can I need to move it up more. But you, it's it's you know, you can see from this demonstration, all I gotta do is just move my head to the left, 
I can see my, the, the target when it runs up, I can see the shot spotter, the scoring disc, and that's it. Or if I was at the range and I wanted to just see my, my hits on the paper or the steel, I can just quickly move my head over to the side and that's it. And most people, if they set it up correctly, let's set it up a little bit better here for myself here in this position, run it up a little bit taller. What you can do is literally have the spiny scope eyepiece on your eye while you're shooting. So all you gotta do is just shift your focus to your left eye and see the spiny scope, right eye, left eye, right eye, left eye. And that's great if you're using your spotting scope for what I use it for, is to call the wind. I can see the mirage, I'll focus it to see the mirage downrange, so I can take my shots, and then in between shots, I can quickly spot the mirage. Hey, has, it, has the mirage changed, winds, you know, has the waves uh, moving slower, or have they let off, has the direction of the waves changed, that sort of thing. So that's kind of why I run a spotting scope. But as you can see here, that's the perfect way to deploy it. Uh, this is a poor way, poor tripod to use for this demonstration, but I have another tripod, basically a traditional style tripod. You can see here, if I tried to do this, this type of shooting with a spotting scope in the prone position, and let me go ahead and get this thing on here real quick. Bear with me because this is not a quick release clamp. Get that on there. All right, so let's just say Ah, that does not can't forward much, much, can't around much. But you can get a tripod to go low, right? You can, you can widen the legs out to make, it's gonna be a really wide base, but you can flatten the tripod down as low as it can go. And you can do, get a spotting scope like that. However, if you notice here, can I get this lower? I think I can. Sorry, let me make this a fair, fair demonstration here. There you go. It's a little lower. So. I could probably do it. However, I have these legs in the way because the legs are, you know, their legs are long. It's got a wider base compared to that scope stand. It's hitting my elbow and I, I'm really tight. I can make it work, but as I move, I'm probably gonna hit my scope, my tripod and move my scope out of the way and I'll be struggling with it. So that's one reason, I mean, that's kind of a quick demonstration of why I feel like tripods are not good for spotting scopes. And people say, oh, I'm never gonna use it prone. Fine. Let's say you're using it on a bench position, which is what many people do. And we'll just assume I'm sitting upright. I'm standing, but let's just let's assume I'm upright at a bench. And I have my I have my spotting scope. If you notice here, when I'm shooting at a bench, I'm usually shooting behind the bench or maybe left of the bench, or you know, whatever, I'm right-hand shooter. You're gonna have to figure out a way to get this these tripod legs to not hit the bench because most benches this is going to hit and you're not going to be able to get it close to you. So most people I see with a tripod and a spotting scope, they're usually just offset and they're having to get behind, try to move themselves behind the uh, behind the spotting scope. You know, they're here, they're shooting, then they have to move over. Or that's true. Maybe they'll lean over. It's like, oh, you know, whatever. You know, I guess if you want to go that route, that's fine. However, as I'll demonstrate with this scope stand, I should probably get a quick release for this scope clamp here. Again, I'm a right-handed shooter. I'll be sitting on the left side of the bench. I can easily get my body scope next to me on the bench. Let's just assume I'm, I'm sitting at a bench. And this scope stand, the base is very thin. I can get it near me and I can, you know, without having to offset myself, you know, I have to move over to go to the scope. I can have it really close to me. Bench will probably be right here if I'm shooting right left of the bench, and then I can still have it close to me, you know, lean down or whatever, and quickly look through my spotting scope. I mean, that's that's kind of it. I mean, I feel that scope stands are most ergonomic. I mean, there's other scenarios. Again, sitting for those of you, those of you who shoot high power, understand that this will work best for you know in other positions as well compared to a tripod because when I'm shooting my standing, you know, when I'm shooting my 200 or standing, I'll shoot, target runs down, I'll just kind of bend over look there and then that's it. For sitting, I mean, I can go here either way. I can usually, I think I usually have it on my left side back when I used to shoot sitting, but I can just, I can have my spotting scope in my sitting position like that, have it on target, 
take my take my sitting shots you know whatever if it's a rapid fire string then i can wait for the target to come up during my ciders i can take my shot look at my ciders watch the scoring disc to come up and then look at the wind that sort of thing so it's ideal to have a scope stand tripod again it's just the base is too wide it'll be in your way legs will be too close to you or in your obstructing your view or obstructing your equipment so scope stand very very low footprint not as stable as a tripod i will argue that but i think this is better for solo spotting if you're spotting for yourself now if you're going to use your spotting scope for other people if you're going to spot for other people in general then by all means get a tripod if you're not going to spot for yourself I figure just spend your money on a tripod if you don't already have a tripod. Because if you're a rifle shooter in general, I feel that you should have a tripod. There's other uses for it, like shooting off of it, uh, other support type scenarios, and not just spotting scopes. You can use binos, as you can see here. Oop, and that's handle my weight. Uh, you can, I have my binos here on this really rare stuff, TFC 234 with the Anvil 30 head. So this is great for spotting for someone else, right? Uh, great to have a tripod. I mean, it's very stable. It's pretty rock solid. You can weight them down. Scope stands, I'll, are, you know, I'll admit these are wobbly uh, for the most part compared to something like a tripod. And these are, this is gonna be better on like uneven ground, rocky dirt and whatnot. This is mainly for like flat range use. But if you're spotting for yourself, again, I recommend scope stand tripods if you're spotting for someone else definitely and if you don't need to use your spotting cup from position then i guess get a tripod if you don't already have one anyway if you have any other questions or comments about what i just presented here feel free to reach out to me on the comments of this video and i'll try to answer your concerns or your questions as best i can